Is it good now? All right. So, Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita and Krishna in the Uddhava Gita also points out that gambling means cheating. As, as soon as you have any kind of gambling, the element of cheating comes in. And Shakuni, that whole game was rigged. Cheating. So when one comes on the spiritual path, one first of all has to break the four pillars of sinful life. Just like any house or construction has four pillars which the roof rests on. So there's four pillars of sinful life and there are four pillars of religious life. They go hand in hand. So one of those pillars of sinful life is gambling, cheating, lying. So when you institute any kind of gambling or participate in any kind of gambling, you're destroying the religious pillar of truthfulness. That's what's happening. You are destroying that pillar, the corresponding pillar of religion. Then another one is uh, mercy. That's a pillar of religion. And the corresponding pillar of irreligion is animal slaughter. As long as a society or people engage in animal slaughter, then the quality of mercy is now gone in human society. So that's mercy and animal killing. One is the pillar of irreligious life. Mercy is a pillar of religious life. Then you have the sinful pillar of intoxication. And what does intoxication do? It destroys the religious pillar of austerity. Throughout the Mahabharata, you'll see Vyasadeva and the Rishis. They're from time to time visiting the Pandavas while they're in the forest. And while they're in the forest for 13 years, what are the Pandavas doing? Austerity, penances. And by doing that, they're gaining more and more and more pious credits. They're increasing their great fortune, their religious and spiritual account. Even it was described that uh, Kunti, Kunti was not in the forest for the 12, 13 years. She stayed with Vidura in Hastinapur. But it was mentioned that during that time, Kunti was performing great austerities and penances. She was worshipping Lord Vishnu and of course, constantly praying to Krishna. Right? Her nephew, right? Krishna, Krishna's aunt is uh, Kunti because Kunti is the sister of Krishna's father Vasudev so austerity and penance it is there's another expression penance is the wealth of the brahmana the kshatriyas and the vaishyas money money got to have money and we described previously duryodhan right even at one point when, when Duryodhan and Shukuni brought up to Dhritarashtra, let's do the gambling match because we want all this wealth that Yudhishthir just got from the Rajasuya. What did Dhritarashtra tell his son? He said, you have enough wealth. Why do you want more? You, haven't, you, can, you have so much wealth as it is. But that's the problem with someone who's greedy. They're never satisfied. That this is the problem. A brahmana, on the other hand, 
Whatever he has, I'm happy. A Brahmana may live in a little hut. And he's happy and peaceful. Or a Brahmin may live in a big palace. The good example is Sudama. Sudama was a pure Brahmana. Throughout his whole life, poor, so poor. Poverty stricken. Even when he had to go, when he wanted to go see Krishna, he, they were so poor, they had to go to the neighbor and beg some rice. None of you are like that, right? All of you got enough rice in your kitchens. But Sudama was so poor, he had to go to the neighbor. The wife had to go to the neighbor to get. And that rice she got was, what? Poha, the cheap, the very inexpensive. Not the first class basmati. <laughs> no, the cheap. So, but Sudama, even though he's so poor, he's peaceful and happy. And then after Krishna blessed him, when Sudama came back from visiting Krishna, and he came to his house, and he, what's this? He saw this palace now, and servants, and his wife came out. She looked like the goddess of fortune. He couldn't recognize her at first. And Sudama lived very nicely, but it was the same Sudama. Not that now that he became rich, he became like Duryodhana. I want more. <laughs> no. So uh, the idea is the Brahman is satisfied and there is this phrase, austerity is the wealth of the Brahmins. The more austerity, that's how they calculate their wealth. Not by their stock folio or their bank account or how many Lexus and Mercedes he has. Right? There was one so-called person. 95 Rolls Royces and he's supposed to be a spiritual person. No. So austerity and by taking intoxication you destroy that Ability to become austere. Just like any athlete. Right? Anyone who is a good athlete. He cannot be. He cannot go on the, the field intoxicated. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No. Austerity. You have to save your energy. So you have, just like are you, you finished high school or college. You're in second year of college. So you know, and what are you studying to be? Physiologist. All right. So you have to spend hours in the classroom, hours studying. You can't be staying up night, night after night having party. You won't do good. You know that. You have to put in your time. You just finished law school, right? Lots of hours of study, right? Can't be watching ZTV. <laughs> no. You have to be spending hours and hours denying yourself sense gratification so that you can pass the bar. When do you take it? So let's bless you that you pass the bar. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare So austerity is destroyed by intoxication then the last item the last item the pillar of religion cleanliness my mother my first guru my mother you would always say to me Nikki cleanliness is next to godliness then when I met my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, I read the same, I said, well, Prabhupada saying the same thing my mother used to say every day. That's why I called my mother my first guru. She was teaching me what is taught in Krishna consciousness. And what destroys cleanliness? Illicit connection with women. That destroys cleanliness. So the four pillars of sinful life, the four pillars of religious life, they go hand in hand. So when one 
uh, begins, takes a vow to uh, pursue spiritual life, he has to knock down those four pillars of sinful life and establish the four pillars of religious life. Then one lives under the roof of piety and religion. And from piety and religion, dharma, what comes next? Economic development. And with economic development, you can live happily, peacefully. Then, the last stage, achieving liberation. But you can go beyond liberation. There is a stage beyond liberation. Many, many people do not know this. Many people think liberation, salvation is the end. No. Lord Chaitanya teaches us there's something beyond liberation. And that is called love of God. Love of God is beyond liberation. And love of God is so great that even you're living here in Irvine. This is Irvine, right? So even you're living in Irvine, you can be beyond liberated. You can have this love of God wherever you go. So these four pillars and then along with that you chant this beautiful maha mantra everybody hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare do we have any more questions i think you had a question no you yes you you wanted to hear something about Radha and Krishna? Yeah, it's all-time favorite of mine. <laughs> you like Radha and Krishna? Well, I like Radha and Krishna too. <laughs> so is there any particular aspect or just in general, tell me what you would like? Because I'm in a really good mood today. <laughs> something about Gopi Geet? Something about Gopi well, let's go to Gopigi because I just happen to have it right here. Well, that's no problem. Garlands are always good. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right. I'm getting two garlands? Wow. Come and get your blessing. And may you be successful physiologist. I want to be a doctor. You want to be a doctor. <laughs> may you become the best doctor. Hare Krishna. Oh, very good. Hare Krishna. Okay. Well, whoever gives, they're the ones that get, you know. But those who made the garlands, I bless you too. How's that? Uh, let's find the Gopi Geet. Ah, here it is. The Gopi Geet. Oh, that doesn't have the translations. All right. Repeat after me. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. All right, so first we have to give the background of what is Gopi Gita. The background is the night of the Rasa dance. Keep in mind that these are not stories. They're histories. Big difference. The story is something like Harry Potter nonsense. That's a story. This is history. Persons like Shukadeva Goswami and Vyasadeva are not going to waste their time with nice fairy tales. They got better things to do. So this Night of the Rasa Dance is a history. It's an actual event. And not only did it take place 5,000 years ago, it is going on right now. Because just like the sun, although it's cloudy today, but the sun is always present somewhere. It's not that the sun goes to sleep. When it's nighttime here, what's happening in India? Uh -huh. Midnight here, right? 12 noon 
somewhere in India. Right? The sun is always present. Similarly, Krishna performs his pastimes in this universe. But well, we're not the only universe. There are millions and millions of other universes. And Krishna's pastimes are always going on somewhere in some universe. Just like right now, it's 1219. Hawaii is two hours earlier. In two hours, it'll be 1219 in Hawaii. So somewhere right now, Krishna is killing Putana. Somewhere right now, Krishna is killing Kamsa. And right now, somewhere, Krishna is dancing the rasa dance with the gopis. These pastimes are always present. And you know what? You can join. How would you like to join Krishna's pastimes and participate? Just like Meenakshi, Meena's husband, he wants to be right there with Arjuna on the battle of Kurukshetra, am I right? That's where he wants to be. Like you, me, I want to be that rasa dance. So in the night of the rasa dance, Krishna was dancing with the gopis. There was one Krishna for every two gopis. And in the middle was Radha Krishna, surrounded by all these thousands of gopis. And for every two gopis, there was one Krishna. But each gopi was perceiving Krishna is dancing with me alone. Even though all this is going on. And during the height of the beginning of the dance, the gopis were smelling Krishna's arms. Krishna doesn't need deodorant. <laughs> Krishna's arms are itself very fragrant. And they were dancing very nicely. And the gopis were thinking, Oh, oh I am so fortunate. I'm so... I'm so special. I'm dancing with Krishna. Everything, all the gopis were thinking like that. And Krishna said, Hmm, these gopis are getting a little proud. I don't want my devotees to become proud. Krishna disappeared. What? what? Krishna disappeared from all the gopis. And he went deep into the forest with Radharani. Actually, Radharani led Krishna because Radharani was thinking, hmm, I'm not getting any special attention here. So it was Radharani who led Krishna deep into the forest. And Krishna was picking flowers for Radharani. Krishna made a nice crown for Radharani. And then at a certain point, Radharani said, Oh, Krishna, I'm so tired. I can't go anymore. You'll have to carry me. Krishna said, yes, I'll carry you. Just get on my shoulder. And as soon as Radha approached, Krishna disappeared from Radharani because she too became proud. So Radharani finally meets up with the other gopis who they've been searching for. After Krishna left, the gopis were searching through the forest. Where is Krishna? They were asking the trees. They were asking the animals. They saw the Tulsi plant. They said, oh, Tulsi, you are beloved of Krishna. Have you seen Krishna? But they didn't see. Krishna had disappeared from them and invisible to them was watching all of this. So when Radha and the gopis met, the gopis learned that Krishna also left her. So they took her within their midst. They sat down on the bank of the Yamuna. And they started to sing this song, Gopi Geet. Different gopis sang a particular verse. O oh, beloved, so there, Krishna is not present. Krishna is invisible, but Krishna is seeing everything. That's Krishna. He can be invisible, but he can see. Kind of scary. Krishna is in your heart. He sees everything that's going on. No secrets from Krishna. None. Can't hide from Krishna. <laughs> He's watching you at every moment. O oh, beloved, your birth in the land of Raja 
has made it exceeding glorious. And thus Indira, the goddess of fortune, always resides here. It is only for your sake we, your devoted servants, maintain our lives. We have been searching everywhere for you, so please show yourself to us. So the gopi's mood is one of surrender, like Meenakshi sang, Shri Krishna Sharanam Mama. I take shelter of Krishna. Surrender means to take shelter. And the mood of surrender and shelter was we talked about at the very beginning, humility. So then they say, O Lord of love, yes, nobody can beat Krishna when it comes to loving pastimes. Krishna puts Cupid to shame. Cupid becomes frustrated because when it comes to loving affairs, there is a book, the Govinda Lilamrita, and in that book is described exactly how Krishna carries on his loving affairs with Radharani and the gopis. Very, very detailed account. And by reading that book, anyone who thinks they can compete with Krishna, they're laughable. Nobody can compete with the loving affairs of Krishna. He wrote the book. There's nothing all these actresses and moving, all these stupid, silly things. Nonsense. The pastimes of Krishna and the gopis, this is the pinnacle of loving affairs. And it's all completely pure. Not a tinge of material lust. It's completely on the transcendental platform. O oh Lord of love in beauty, your glance excels the whirl of the finest, most perfectly formed lotus within the autumn pond. O bestower of benedictions, you are killing these maidservants who have given themselves to you freely without any price. Isn't this murder? So notice the gopis considered themselves maidservants. Not wives, maidservants. When I go to Panama and Chile, all the Indian families have maids, local maids. So the wife never considers herself a maid. She's the boss of the maids. Some of them have two, three maids living in the house. Right? The gopis consider themselves maidservants of Krishna, not his wives. Again, humility. And notice they address Krishna, bestower of benedictions. And they feel that because Krishna has left them, that, that is killing them because their love for Krishna is so great. O oh, greatest of personalities, you have repeatedly saved us from all kinds of danger. From poisoned water. That was when the Kaliya serpent came. He had polluted the uh, Yamuna River. So Krishna took care of that. From the terrible man-eater Agha. That was another demon Krishna killed. From the great rains. Yes. When Indra was trying to drown the city land of Vrindavan for seven days. Uh, from the wind demon, there was a demon, Trinavarta, who tried to kidnap Krishna. But as usual, Krishna would kill the demon. From the fiery thunderbolt of Indra, yes, besides the rain, Krishna was throwing Thunderbolts, lightning, wind. He was trying to completely destroy Vrindavan. And therefore, Krishna became known as Giridhari, lifting the mountain. Seven years old, with his left pinky 
and held it up for seven days and seven nights, acting like an umbrella. So the gopis are remembering the times Krishna saved them from all these demons. Now this next one is quite interesting. The gopis say, you are not actually the son of the gopi Yashoda. You are actually the indwelling witness in the hearts of all embodied souls. So the gopis seem to be aware of the fact that Krishna is Paramatma, super soul. That's why I said a few minutes ago, Krishna sees everything we're doing, even right now. He's there in your heart. He sees. Because Lord Brahma prayed for you to come and protect the universe, you have now appeared. Yes. At the beginning, Lord Brahma is approached by Mother Earth. Mother Earth approaches Lord Brahma in the form of a cow. And she has tears in her eyes. And why is she crying? She's crying because the earth at that time was under the control of Kamsa. And Kamsa had made a united nations of demons. I'm not making any comment about our present united nations. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But Kamsa made a united nations of demons. And they had compiled what is known as the military industrial complex. All the demons were simply increasing their forces. And Mother Earth was feeling too much burden because of all these demons. So she went to Lord Brahma, please do something. And she had tears. Mother Earth is smart. No man can tolerate the crying of a woman. Impossible. When a woman comes with tears, he's finished. Anything you want. So Brahma was not able to solve it. So therefore Brahma, Mother Earth, Lord Shiva, all the demigods, they went to the shore of the ocean of milk. Because in that ocean of milk, is a white island, Shweta Dweep. And on that island is Lord Shiro Dakashayi Vishnu. And they offered prayers. And Lord Brahma got a message in his heart that all the demigods should expand themselves and take birth in this Yadu dynasty, Krishna's family, that he was going to appear. Because the message was that Krishna himself, the original Narayan, the source of all other incarnations, he himself was going to come and the demigods should all assist him. So the gopis know about this also. All right. Everyone chant the Maha Mantra. <laughs> 